watching Cougar Tracks Game Day, powered by Bank of American Fork. All right, we're here at the stadium, and of course, after the big game, 20 to 19, classic score, of Dave Noriega. At the very <laughs> least, it's a classic score of the rivalry game, 20 to 19. The two-point conversion didn't just end up being the decision, uh, the, the deciding factor, but it also ended up being the thing that everybody and their dog had a comment about after the game. Play clock at 15, Taysom settles into the gun. Utes by one, BYU goes for two. Brown motions. Snap Hill. Wildcat. Taysom quarterback draw. Caught at the three yard line. He goes down. Boy, oh boy, they had no blocking at all on that gap. And 20 to 19 is your score. That's going to be the thing that everybody's going to talk about this game always forever with. Yeah, and, and one of the things that really stood out to me is I was there for the 7-6 the game at Boise. I me mean, too. we were, we were yeah, both yeah. there, and, and there was a lot of discussion about there. It was Taysom Hill again coming up short. But this is this is why I liked it in this situation. Bronco made that decision in Boise last minute. Kalani knew he wanted to go for two from the get-go. He said in his press conference, that was always the plan. That's why you saw after the touchdown, nobody left the field. They just looked at the sidelines for the play. Now, the, the question I had, I, I agree, I would agree agreed with that call. As soon as the timeout happened and, and Utah had a chance to set their defense, then I would have kicked the point. Then you the, start thinking about point. it. Yeah. What would you have done? I, I was, Kick it? I was, no, no, no. I was totally with Kalani Sitake after the game. I say, I'm not only was I confident that they should do it, I said do it again. Because when are you going to get, what has your offense been doing so efficiently all game suddenly? Yeah. There's. It was the same thing with the Boise drive. I, was, I agreed with that call too because you had Really, three put, yards to get a win. Yeah, and and you put yourself in that position, but not that often all game long. Right. So if you're three yards away from a win, I'd take that. But and Twitter also don't forget up. that 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 defense was dead. They were done. It had been an 11 minute, 20 plus play drive. They were they were exhausted. So to to consider putting uh, extra time and overtimes on top of it, I think three yards make a play. You have the momentum. I like the call, uh, but after. Utah was able to reset after the timeout. I think I probably would have kicked it because uh, they were just pr obviously prepared for it. Well, it was uh, certainly a battle there, and we had our predictions that we made uh, pre-game. And so we put them up there. They're all on here, so we're going to have to go through and actually pay the piper when it comes to this. Of course, you can see our grades throughout the season. We're keeping our own game GPAs, then season GPAs uh, throughout here. So we've got a couple of big ones. Dave, I, I challenged you on one. I said, will Troy Williams have more passing yards than Taysom Hill? Uh, you said yes, and he did. I said yes. I said more passing yards from Troy Williams. But I said uh, Taysom would dominate on the rush game, which is exactly what he yeah. did. That's an A for me. You got an A Dead on that one. A. Well, it was a whole 18 yards that Troy Williams threw more than Taysom Hill this oh, evening. Oh, wait, wait. It was more, though, right? It was more. Uh, I was, uh, I, you asked me earlier, will BYU have a turnover in the first 10 minutes of the game? And I said, absolutely. They will have one turnover in the first 10 minutes. We didn't have to wait that long. It was the first two seconds of the game, Dave. I was shocked that it was only one turnover because I'm like, I've seen this story before. I was down in Las Vegas. I know how this turns out. It's usually five turnovers in the first quarter, but you, you're you absolutely right. Uh, we also asked how many unsportsmanlike penalties during the game, and initially we're like, hey, this is going well. Everything's going okay. I, I said, it melted down. I said uh, two for BYU, two for Utah, and it would be like offsetting penalties on kind of some chippy plays. The funny thing is, is you had two BYU players ejected, but it wasn't chippy play. They were both reviewed. They were both kind of like on the edge there. Certainly the kind of cool ones yeah. one going to be, everybody's going to be looking at and wondering about. But uh, it ended up with the ejections and then a couple of other ones, including Kalani Satake and Tanner Mangum. Tanner Mangum and Kalani Satake, guys who weren't actually playing in the game, got on sportsmanlike penalties. It was four for BYU and two for Utah, a total of six. That's not too bad. I think I was pretty That's close great. You know what, I'm going to give you a, a solid B on that. Why are, you, why are you suddenly the teacher on this? All right, and then, Dave, I asked you also about the sack totals. I said, how many sacks would BYU have? Uh, I, I whiffed on this. I, I said two. There were zero. Zero sacks for BYU. But there was some pressure. There were some tackles for loss, but the fact was Troy Williams was able to escape all of BYU's pressure. So then we threw the scores out, and uh, you and I both – 
did the scoring. I said BYU yeah. 16, Utah 13. It was a low enough scoring game. Uh, and you had it just above that. You said 17 14. to 14. Yeah. We both had a three point differential. I think that I win the tie break on that one. So you were less close to the final <laughs> score than me. I'm not sure how you win that. <laughs> One of our favorite segments, of course, where we talk about the things that we absolutely, not only did we not like it, but we never ever want to see it again. Pick six to start the game? Shades of pick sixes starting game. How does this happen? What about even maybe uh, the, the Jake Heaps right at the beginning of the game, a uh, little yes. scoop and score down in Provo. Uh, so a big no, no, no to throwing up all over yourself right at the to beginning. start the game. Wait till the end of the night if you're going to do yeah. that. No, no, no also to BYU fans who are suddenly now already saying put in Tanner Mangum. I know that you might just be lashing out on Twitter. This is the thing you have to understand. This is one of the elite defenses yeah. run by one of the elite coordinators and philosophies really in the nation. Utah has had a great defense forever. And the fact that you think that one quarterback would, would the truth is, it's just a great defense. Give all the credit to Utah. They're great defense and they have been for years. And the fact that the BYU kept it close and kept it exciting, I'm not sure you could ask for much more. 19 points in the second week for BYU. But defense only gave up 13. That's true. So uh, you're kind of seeing a, a sputtering offense a little bit with shades of Taysom's brilliance. But, uh, of course, Utah showing up and doing what Utah does in recent years against BYU, and that's getting wins, and especially the close wins, despite all of the turnovers. Next week, UCLA, who got the win today against UNLV, 42-21 to down in California. They come to Provo. That should be another Pac-12 matchup for BYU, and uh, hopefully it goes the Cougars' way. For Cougar Tracks Game Day, Alex Curie, Dave Noriega. Cougar Tracks Game Day is powered by Bank of American Fork. Big city banking, small town service.